Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown of All's Fans. I'm your host, Bull, and it's time for my day 12 of spring practice thoughts. But first things first, okay, I just got some news that Jonas Adu is planning on hitting that transfer portal and or, you know, trying to enter into the NBA draft. So I know that this video is not going to be about basketball, but I did want to bring that to y'all. I mean, that's going to be a pretty big deal. And we'll probably have a video covering that. Maybe we can go on and get Tobe to, you know, come back to this team. I think that that would be a really big deal. But we got to hear from uh, the specialist coach in Coach Eckler. Uh, and he's also the outside linebackers coach, if I'm not mistaken. We heard from Coach Sims. We heard from Dylan Sampson. Uh, we heard from Jackson Ross. And we heard from Khalifa Keith. So a lot to cover in that aspect of it. And obviously, we'll get into the insider news and notes and things like that. But as always, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, Coach Eckler just got me so fired up, okay? We already know that this team's offense is going to be taking a big step forward. The defense, same thing. But our special teams may have actually been the best phase of our entire team last year. A lot of people tend to overlook special teams. We haven't even talked about special teams at all throughout all of spring or really I mean, most of the offseason. So it is very important, okay, to have a really good special teams unit. I think that last season we may have been, or I mean, we really were, I would say top five in the entire country. Our, uh, you know, punt team has not given up more than, I want to say maybe like 10 yards over two seasons, and it might actually be zero. So that just goes to show how good that room is. But listening to Coach Eckler talk about how, hey, we're going to be taking even more steps forward, talks about how Jackson Ross is a weapon. And he kind of started last season off slow, but towards the end, I mean, he was on fire and he could punt with his right foot, with his left foot, rugby style, all of that. So that's huge. I think that we're still looking for a, uh, you know, place kicker, maybe even for like a field goal kicker, but we'll figure out what that looks like uh, in Saturday's orange and white game. But yeah, I mean, I'm just very proud of that room. And hearing Coach Eckler talk about Squirrel White uh, and Boo Carter and how much he loves them as punt return guys, as kickoff return guys, I feel like just knowing that that room is going to be taking another step forward, which he said is going to be the best that we've had since we've been up in Knoxville, that right there speaks volumes. And we kind of thought that just coming out of last season because we already knew that Squirrel White could do it. Um, you know, we knew that Cam Seldon could do it. He's not going to be back till like midway through the season. But Boo Carter was one we said, man, like him being a specialist fits him to a T. I also really love to hear Coach Eckler talk about how, man, Boo is not scared of that moment. It doesn't matter if it's five people watching or if it's 100,000 people watching. And I mean, that's what you want out of your real playmakers. What that tells me is that he's a guy that's going to show up on an all the time basis in those critical moments, which is what means the most. Can you show up when it counts the most? And, uh, you know, I'm just very happy to hear that. I'm very much looking forward to what he's going to be doing this season, not just as a specialist, because Coach Eckler and pretty much everyone else has said, hey, he's a playmaker in all three phases of the game, and he's going to be playing significantly this season. And, you know, when we talked about Squirrel White, he says he can make people miss inside of a phone booth, and he's tough, one of the toughest players on this team. He said he thinks that he's 6'8", 3'10", and he plays like it. He talks about him putting his face on people, and he said he's really big on that. So, those are things that P and I, like, as we're hearing it, we're just getting hyped up. We're getting fired up because that's how we was taught football. Like, you got to be able to stick your face in there, stick your neck in there. And if you're willing to do that over and over and over again, that's when you start to beat teams like Georgia that like to play that bully ball. But you got to be able to do it on a consistent basis in all three phases of the game with all of your players. And just hearing that, it, you know, having some of these smaller guys, these skill position guys doing that is really big. So, it was fun listening to Coach Eckler. It always is. And he's a guy that we want to keep around as much as possible because not only is he a great special teams coach, but with the energy that he brings, he does a really good job of going out and identifying talent and being able to close on that talent. Something else that I really like to hear was that Coach Heupel is front and center in those special teams meetings, and he knows what to do. He can take over those meetings. As a football player, uh, as anyone who knows football, you know, if you just love sports in general, and you have to understand that having a head coach that can go into any position room and, you know, be that leader, you know, really be able to teach those X's and O's. That's not a very common thing, especially in college. A lot of times the head coaches are more like CEOs and, you know, they'll have kind of like a board meeting or something with all the coaches or maybe some individual meetings, things like that, where they're just kind of getting an update on what's going on. But they're not as much hands on as. Coach Heupel is. We see that just in watching spring practices and things like that. So we've got to be very, very excited about this team from top to bottom. And I'm just going to say this early on before this season actually starts, that I feel like this is the best coaching staff in the entire country. And we're going to start to hear all the experts, obviously, once we 
are you know undefeated going on uh, going into the playoffs or you know after we win that national title then you'll start to hear everyone jumping on the bandwagon but i'm telling y'all right here right now this is the best coaching staff in the entire country now on to coach sims it sounds like he loves that running back room even being short a cam selden he hasn't seen peyton lewis in action just yet but he talked very highly of dylan sampson he says man he's grown so much from winter workouts to this point in spring camp and he's proud of that he talks about pass protection uh, he talks about him just being a leader uh you know vocally and with his actions and he also talked about not using him that much i mean he does use him just to you know kind of get those reps in for him but he said man look this is not a guy that we have got to uh you know give a million reps to right like just the little things that he needs to work on is where we're going to use him at so i think that that's very important that coach sims understands that aspect not only of the game but of this team that we're shorthanded and dylan sampson is the guy he's the you know veteran leader he's had the most time uh playing so we need for him if anybody else or if nobody else to be ready to rock and roll and just and listen to what dylan sampson had to say um you know he talks about that citrus bowl and how it was very uh you know important to him to show the staff that he could carry that load as the main running back you know he talked about getting 20 plus carries can he do that on a consistent basis in the sec i think that he can honestly speaking i think you know i feel like he was our second best running back last year behind jalen wright and he got you know the least amount of carries um you know as far as that three back rotation so i'm proud of the steps that he's taken and you know i've heard a couple of other clips and videos and things like that with him talking and you can just tell that he really is that leader he cares about his teammates a lot and I just feel like he's very much embraced the main guy role. And that's what you will want to see for sure. So I think that he's going to have a huge season. I'm very, very much looking forward to what he's going to be doing out here. Now, I don't know if he's going to be playing in this, in this orange and white game, but if he does, I'm looking forward to seeing what he's got out there, especially behind a much younger offensive line. But since the offensive line is going to be younger, I don't think he's going to be carrying the football too much if he plays at all. There's really no reason to do that he's another guy too we haven't really talked about it and he probably won't do this but if we need him to he could be a special teams guy as well but just because he's got that skill set um you know he's a he's a track guy he knows how to take care of his body uh you know he talked about being up to about 200 pounds i don't know how tall he is i would guess somewhere between five eight and five nine but him being 200 pounds and being as explosive as he is is going to be very very important my biggest thing is going to be the pass protection but it sounds like he's been doing a good job with that and that's been a point of emphasis for him in this offseason as well so he will continue to grow and uh you know i think that we're going to be just fine with dylan sampson and coach sims also talked a lot about deshaun bishop he said hey you know he's that spark plug guy he comes in and he gives us a lot he gave him a lot of very high praise and the insiders seem to think that us going into the transfer portal will be determined off of how deshaun bishop performs throughout all of the, well, I mean, I guess, you know, over these next couple of days uh, in, in spring. And I agree to some extent, but because his body type and his style of play is so similar to uh, Dylan Sampson, I think that really Khalifa Keith is the guy that the staff is looking at saying, okay, where is he going to end up at by, you know, the time that spring is over with after Saturday? You know, like once they look at the film and, and all that, do we feel comfortable enough with Mr. Keith to be that guy to come in and take over more reps because I really feel like you want to always have that one two points. I mean, you can have two running backs that are very, very similar, but for me, it's usually if they're bigger body. But Dylan Sampson and uh, Bishop are two smaller body guys. Khalifa Keith is the only one that's left at this point. Peyton Lewis will be back by summer, but at this point, Khalifa Keith is the only bigger body back. So I would think that if he could come along, then that's when. As a staff, we say, okay, we don't need to go out into that transfer portal. But at the same time, if it was just me personally, from a sheer numbers perspective, I'm going to be inside of that portal just to go out and get another body. But, you know, we might talk about that a little bit later on in this video or in a different video. And sticking with Khalifa Keith, Coach Sims has some good things to say about him, but I would also just kind of say, based off of the way that Coach Sims was kind of saying it, it sounds like he wants to see more from Mr. Keith. And he talked about him getting his confidence levels up, talked about him running a little bit more physically. We just talked about that in the video yesterday that, hey, if you're a bigger body back, you need to run physical. Now, Khalifa Keith, whenever he spoke, said pretty much the exact opposite. It was like, man, look, I have that confidence. And, uh, you know, I feel like I do run physical. That's part of my game. But it sounds like Keith is maybe our best 
pass blocker uh, as far as that running back room goes as, as of this moment. So I just feel like, again, he's going to be a guy that we're probably going to be leaning on and hoping that he can get it together. And I'm not saying that he's been playing bad, okay? I haven't really seen him playing poorly, but in the little clips that I've seen, and I've watched everything, even outside of what we've shared on this channel, if it's about our spring practice or Tennessee football or Tennessee pretty much anything, I'm going to be watching it and I'm going to be dissecting it. And what I've seen from Khalifa Keith is a lot of what we kind of saw from him in high school. He's a guy that you would expect to be a much more physical runner, but he doesn't run through contact, I don't believe, well enough. And that's something that he is going to need to improve on, okay? That's the way that I feel. If Coach Sims feels that same way, then I'm going to stick with that. But I'm happy to hear that, uh, you know, Keith feels like, hey, man, you know, I am a physical running back, you know, so he thinks that inside of his mind. He's speaking it. The next step is going to be to work towards that. So we should see it. And I'm hoping to see him really finish the runs, uh, you know, very, very strong coming up here uh, in the orange and white game. So I'll keep a very close eye out on that. Now, uh, as far as Jackson Ross, he just kind of talked about being able to punt with his right, with his left leg and, uh, you know, just kind of getting acclimated um, and being a more laid back player. But usually the specialist guys are very laid back. Like he said, man, I mean, they don't do the same types of stuff in practice. They're usually not even on the same practice field. Um, that's just how it was for us. Like we never really even saw those guys unless it was like a, you know, full team meeting or, you know, we're eating or, you know, like you see them around campus. But as far as in a practice setting, you don't really see them until the end, you know, like whenever you're working on uh, all the specialty types of things. So, yeah, I mean, they're usually pretty laid back. I mean, like they just chill for most of the day. And I think that that's why, um, you know, for those of us who have played or coached or who have been around football a lot, that's why we get so frustrated whenever they miss a field goal or things like that. But I really love Jackson Ross. I mean, I, I really think that he's going to end up being the best punter in the country this season. You know, I feel like he might have been that last year. They talked a lot about Iowa's uh, punter, but, you know, I feel like Jackson Ross outperformed him tremendously. And uh, he didn't have as many opportunities as uh, as Iowa's punter did. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I think we're going to be fine there. We still have to find a place kicker. Uh, and I believe we don't really know who the field goal kicker is going to be. So it's going to be interesting to see how that looks in uh, Saturday's Orange and White game. Now, on to what I actually saw out there on the practice field, okay? Starting off with the offensive line, what we're seeing from the veterans, from the guys that we have projected as starters, which is going to be Lance Hurd, Sham Umarov, um, you know, John Campbell. We didn't get to see Cooper Mays out there today, um, but Dane Davis is going to be one of those swing guys. We kind of talked about that. You know, he could play anywhere. The little fundamental things are just beautiful, right? The hand placement is on point. The footwork is great that punch that burst the hip everything so from a fundamental perspective it's very very clean and uh just looking at those young guys you've seen how much they've come from day one to where we are right now so i'm very much proud of this staff just in the fact that they saw what we what we did with the d line and they're kind of implementing that with the offensive line we're letting guys like cooper mays and sprags kind of sit this thing out and you know we are going to be able to build more depth because of that. So that's a really big deal. And those young guys are going to be playing a ton on Saturday. Okay. Especially, you know, on, on that offensive line, they're going to be playing a lot. I think that they will be able to get, uh, you know, a lot of great work going up against four to five ways worth of top SEC caliber defensive linemen. And that's going to be huge. It's going to be critical for us moving forward. I'm very anxious to see what happens with those younger guys as we head into summer ball, because I feel like some of those guys could actually help us out. Um, you know, we're still not very sure on what's going to happen with the backup center spot. Is it going to be Vice and Lang? Is it going to be William Satterwhite? We'll see. I still feel pretty confident that the left guard is going to be Sham Umarov starting. And I also still very much would like to see Adam Bustle get a look over there as well, because in some of the pictures that I've seen, he just looks jacked. I mean, he looks like he's ready to play, but I want to trust this coaching staff. They know who's the best fit to be our starters, but it's just a great position for us to be in with so much depth on that line once everyone comes back and gets healthy. Now on to the D-line. Didn't see a whole lot of them today. I will just kind of point out that, um, you know, guys like Shandavian Bradley do need to continue to gain some weight. That's going to be a big point of emphasis, I'm sure, for him heading into summer ball. You're going to have to put on 10 to 15 pounds because we do want to have you. Not that we necessarily need them because we're so deep, but if we could just add another body, right? I mean, that would be huge. That would be very critical for us in, uh, you know, a very long season in the SEC. Uh, but pretty much outside of that, I mean, it's business as usual with our defensive front. Didn't get to see anything from the linebackers today. 
But, uh, you know, we already know that's a really good room. We're going to be watching it very closely coming up here in the orange and white game. Um, and as far as the wide receivers, we didn't get to see them either. But I've been hearing some great things about a lot of consistency from that room. And also, we can just kind of talk about Squirrel White. Sounds like he's going to end up being a starter on special teams, which means that we've got some good depth inside of that room, right? It means that, uh, you know, we really trust a guy like Braylon Staley. So I'm happy to hear that. Uh, you know, I think that Mike Matthews is a guy that is going to get a lot of playing time this season as well. Um, obviously, Dante Thornton, Chris Brazel, Chaz Nimrod, uh, you know, Caleb Webb, seeing some clips from Nate Spillman where he's looking pretty good out there. So just a really, really deep room. Um, just excited to see them out there on Saturday. And uh, let's talk about the secondary because we actually got to see them go to work today. That room is loaded. And I would say that all of the players have just progressed so much just from the time that spring started. Uh, especially a guy like Edris Farouk. Watching his progression, the steps forward that he's taken, I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But it's going to be very interesting to see what the starting rotation looks like. Do we play all of those guys, especially with the transfer players that we have? You know, some of those guys are projected to be starters. So do they get to kind of sit it out more or less? Or is the staff really going to want to see them go to work? I would say that maybe give them two to three series and let these younger players get out there if they're veterans if you had them projected to be a starter you don't really need to see them uh in this orange and white game and it's really not this is not really even for the coaches so much as it is for us again outside of those younger players so uh tight ends winning we did not get to see them go today either um but yeah it's going to be interesting there too because ethan davis holding stays mouse kitzelman how do they look out there in live situations and what's the rotation going to be you know how many passes are they going to get each? I think that obviously things are going to get spread around because we've got to see what we have heading into summer ball. Now, summer ball is when things will really turn up and that's when we'll be able to make heads and tails of what the team is really going to look like, you know, what the depth chart is really going to look like. So we're not quite there yet, but this is kind of like that first step uh, in figuring out how that's going to look and figuring out who's going to get more reps early on uh, in summer camp. And we didn't get to see the quarterbacks either, okay? Um, but we already know what we have there, Nico is <laughs> probably going to win the Heisman. All right, uh, Gaston Moore, he's a wily old veteran. He knows his offense probably better than anyone on this team and maybe even some coaches on the staff. Okay, he's been around Coach Hypo for a very long time and love what you've been seeing from Jake Merklinger throughout all of spring. But that's pretty much it. Um, there's really no more to add to it. Just ready to get into the orange and white game coming up on Saturday. Now, we will have the walkthrough tomorrow. And a walkthrough is really just kind of coming together and going out on the field with the first group, second group, third group, et cetera, et cetera, on offense, defense, special teams. It, you know, you'll kind of like walk through your coverages, uh, you know, the different plays, things like that. So, I mean, it's really not even a practice. It's literally a walk through. So nothing to see there. Um, but yeah, I mean, the scrimmage coming up here or the orange and white game that's coming up here on Saturday should be a whole lot of fun. And tomorrow, P and I might have a video just kind of coming out talking about our expectations in the orange and white game or we may end up doing that Saturday morning on a live show. But we will see y'all here shortly. And thank y'all so much for sticking all the way to the end. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and all the volunteer fans. And we'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.